Hello, Michael Voris here. Before we start today's Vortex episode, remember that you can watch this episode and all the videos and content we produce over at churchmilton.com. There's Vortex, of course. There's headlines, the download, the one true faith, where did the Bible come from, case files, saint of the day, all sorts of free and premium shows, not to mention daily news and commentary on current events relevant to the Catholic world. So please click the link after the video, and we'll see you at churchmilitant.com. God bless you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Lots of people who attended American high schools might remember the cheer at football games, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. As annoying as it might have been, especially when you were getting blown out, there is a truth there that faithful Catholics need to take to heart. Put simply, you must be at least as aggressive as your enemy or your opposition. In war, in politics, in economics, and most importantly, in matters spiritual. The most aggressive side wins. They always win. This is evident in the spiritual conflict by just looking at the actions of both heaven and hell. Hell is as aggressive as, well, hell. The diabolical never ceases pressing its case. Think, for example, how many times a day you are tempted to a lack of charity, or lust, or pride, or greed, or anger. The volleys never stop coming straight at you. That's called aggression. But heaven is even more aggressive than hell. For example, the second person of the Holy Trinity crashed into this world from heaven, jumped down from his throne, and attacked, violently attacked the kingdom of hell here on earth. It was a giant rescue mission to open a path for the prisoners to escape, and they need to do so post-haste. Get out of the clutches of this aggressive enemy while there is still time. Fight War, aggression, these are the hallmarks of the spiritual life, a well-lived and understood spiritual life. But the single biggest hallmark is that simple little word, aggression. Now, if heaven and hell battle so aggressively, so must we. It is, after all, why we Catholics on earth are called the church militant. A kind of moroseness has settled over the people of God, even those who still believe and hold all the Catholic Church proposes for our salvation. The inaction and lack of aggression by supposedly, supposedly good shepherds in the face of so much confusion and heterodoxy and dissent and heresy is sapping the energy from the faithful. They feel alone, if not outright abandoned, by shepherds who sit quietly by, working on their private little plans to rescue the church. Meanwhile, their families and friends apostatize left and right, bringing further sadness. These bishops have a duty, they have an obligation before Almighty God to step forward and loudly denounce the evils in the church right now, loudly, publicly, now. And right now means right now, not after consulting and conference over months of analysis and hand-wringing. Every day, the likes of Father Martin and many just like him pour out heretical or deceptive messages about the faith to millions through social media. See, so they're constantly aggressive. They equate illegal immigration problems with the murdering of children and not to elevate the immorality of illegal immigration, but to lower the moral importance of abortion. Others write books, they give lectures, they pen articles, which likewise get shared with millions through social media, and yet the good bishops do or say nothing or next to nothing. They have ceded control of the argument, the framing of the debate to the more aggressive lefties in the church, who aren't actually really in the church, whose goal has been and remains to be obscured the church's teachings on the very thing that sends you to hell and conflate them with social justice concerns, which are not intrinsically evil and do not automatically send you to hell. So they urge the voting for candidates who support child murder because they talk about immigration. These same candidates belong to a party or a political ideology that has no more interest in bringing this child separation issue to an end than the man in the moon. 
The Democratic Party doesn't want a solution. It wants the problem. It wants the problem to go on so they have a ranting point against Trump. This is manifest by the fact that it was the Democrats who brought this law into reality, a law which Obama signed on to. Trump is doing the bidding of a Congress and former president who created this situation. It's not his doing. He's enforcing the law they created. Yet the heretics in the church are using this political issue as a wedge, even threatening to level canon law penalties against Catholics who participate in enforcing the law. And exactly how far does that go? They are creating a substitute morality. They are virtue signaling. They are presenting themselves as more moral, not because they are, but so they can attack the church's teachings on sexual morality while appearing to be superior and better Catholics. And through it all, the good leaders say next to nothing, with some of their defenders even claiming that since, for example, James Martin isn't speaking in their diocese, the bishop cannot say anything about what Martin says. That's ridiculous. There isn't a massive border influx of illegal immigrants in most of these dioceses, yet local bishops with a democratic bent have seen fit to never stop talking about the issue. How come the liberals can say and talk about whatever, whenever, but the idea is in some Catholics' minds that good bishops must hold their tongue or not tap anything on their phones, even in the face of a torrent of evil coming from other bishops or priests? The aggressive side always wins, and faithful Catholics and especially Orthodox Catholic leaders had better get their fires burning more intensely. Our blessed Lord was aggressive. It was his divine aggression that defeated the prideful aggression of the demon. Follow suit or die and be damned. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Thanks for watching this episode of The Vortex. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and head over to churchmilitant.com to watch The Vortex headlines, download, Saint of the Day, and countless premium videos on church history, teaching, and apologetics. We have hundreds of hours of videos as well as articles and stories you won't find at any other Catholic outfit. And don't forget, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So be sure to follow us there as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you over at churchmilton.com. God love you.